overloaded. Toby was worried. So many workmen were needed at the quarry that Henrietta wasn't able to carry them all. Bertie did his best to help, but he couldn't get closer than the quarry gate. We need another coach to take the men all the way inside, Toby complained. One morning, Bertie didn't feel well, and Henrietta was all on her own. More and more workmen climbed into her. Help! Henrietta exclaimed. I shan't be able to move. We can't either, grumbled the workmen. We're too squashed together. Henrietta had a balcony at each end, and soon even these were packed. She was fuller than ever before. Toby had a hard job starting. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Toby fussed impatiently, his wheels slipping on the damp rails. People in the streets stared as the train struggled past. Toby rang his bell cheerfully, but Henrietta wasn't so happy. Suddenly, a car came out of a side street in front of them. Toby's driver put on the brakes at once. The train stopped quickly, and some of the workmen were pushed against the railing of Henrietta's front balcony. It bent, but luckily, it didn't break. A policeman passing on a bicycle stopped and made a note on his pad. Oh dear, Henrietta said to herself, that means trouble, I think. She was right. The next day, an inspector visited the quarry manager. There is a bylaw, sir, he said, which says that passengers should not be carried on the end balconies of railway carriages. I'm sorry, inspector, the manager said. It doesn't usually happen but the bus couldn't run today. Please make sure it doesn't happen again, said the inspector sternly. The quarry manager telephoned the fat controller to see if he could help. The fat controller wasn't hopeful, and the quarry manager went home to tea, shaking his head sadly. A few days later, Thomas stopped at the station by the river. As they waited, he heard a buzzing noise from behind a thick hedge that grew near the platform. Suddenly, there was a rustling and a loud crash. A man's head appeared above the hedge. He had a saw in his hand. It's nice to see the railway once more, he said cheerfully. It's been like a jungle in here. Later, Thomas stopped there again. Hello? said a shaky voice. Thomas was puzzled, but his driver had heard it too. He looked over the hedge and saw a very old, very broken down railway coach. What's your name? asked the driver. Victoria replied the coach shyly. Are you Thomas's driver? But before he could answer, the guard's whistle blew and they had to go. At the top station, Toby told Thomas about the workman. I really need another coach, he said sadly. But we just found one, said Thomas excitedly. She's in an orchard near the river, and she is old and lonely. She's got no wheels and her roof leaks like a sieve, interrupted Thomas's driver. Don't even think about it. But Thomas did think about it and asked the Fat Controller. The Fat Controller listened, made some arrangements, and then telephoned the quarry manager. Good morning, Toby and Henrietta, the manager greeted them the next day. It's going to be all right, he went on. The Fat Controller says don't worry about another coach, because he has something up his sleeve.